I rise like the sun sometimes, but then I fall. Like a black moon, I rise when the night falls. When the night falls, the mic calls. So listen, it's the ultraviolet ways to keep me rising on the mission. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Lucrecio. Welcome to Exceed the Hype. Hit that subscribe button because you never know when your team breakdown is coming. Today's video is Can the Cavaliers win the title this year? Now I know a lot of people are like, of course not, they're not even playing good, they have like 40 wins with 10 games to go or whatever. But my thing is, you just have to look around the league right now. When you look around the league at this particular moment, the Golden State Warriors are looking as vulnerable as they looked their whole four year run. The Golden State Warriors have won 67 games, 73 games, 67 games. And this year, they, it looks like they won't even make it to 60 games. This is the weakest and the most vulnerable Golden State Warriors have been in their whole run. Let's look at the Houston Rockets, the leader of the Western Conference. A lot of people have questions about their two biggest stars, James Harden in the playoffs and Chris Paul in the playoffs. Now, I don't have the same type of questions. James Harden surprised me last year with his no-show versus the Spurs. I believe in what was game six without Kawhi Leonard at home. But even with that being the case, I don't particularly have a whole lot of questions versus James Harden. But my thing is, they haven't seen anything like playoff LeBron in a series as of yet. And then if you look over at the Eastern Conference, the Toronto Raptors are playing very good basketball and they are to be taken seriously. However, until I see a Toronto team beat LeBron or push LeBron to the point where he's at least a little worried, I'm not gonna believe that they can beat a LeBron-led team yet. So that leads me to the Cavs themselves. I believe the only people who could hold the Cavs back are themselves. Now, I know what you're thinking. They had a major loss in Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving is no longer there. How on earth could they possibly win without Kyrie Irving? Well, let's talk about it. I think key number five to the Cavaliers possibly getting the title this year is help. They have struggled with injuries all season, as they do every season, as all older teams tend to struggle with injuries or whatever the case may be. But one key for the Cavaliers will be can their guys get healthy at the right time can Rodney Hood get healthy can Larry Nance who wasn't really hurt but may have you know had some progressive fatigue situations can he be ready to go Kevin Love is coming back can he stay healthy the rest of the playoffs can LeBron he will he's on pace to play all 82 this year will he be healthy even though he's always healthy health is key number five Key number four is Kevin Love returning to his all-star form. Kevin Love is a 20 and 10 guy, one of the few 20 and 10 guys that we have in the NBA. He rebounds at a very high level. He shoots from the outside at a very high level. He's a very smart player, a very smart passer. And defensively, he tries on defense. He's just the foot speed just isn't there for Kevin Love. That's my personal opinion. It's just the foot speed, but he knows where to be on defense and he puts the effort in on defense. He's just not good because he's slow laterally. If Kevin Love returns to form, they're going to be impossible to beat out East because he poses a, a bad matchup for Toronto. He poses a bad matchup, well, sort of, for Boston. But if he's playing at a high level, he's better than Al Horford, in my opinion. So Kevin Love returning to, to form is reason four, or key number four. Key number three, playoff LeBron reigned supreme. Now, the past couple years and four, as long as I can remember, LeBron has raised his game in the playoffs to a point where he's just out there, looks like he's playing with kids. In year 33, can he do it again? And how long can he possibly keep up that level of play? Now, the level of play is still high. My question is, how long will it last? So when he when they roll into Washington or whoever the first round matchup is, 
yeah, he's going to be playing on 10 if he has to. And then when they roll into Toronto or whoever the second round matchup is, you know, he's still going to keep it. He's going to either ratchet it up or keep it, you know, on a 10. And then when they get to the final matchup in the Eastern Conference, if he's not already at a 10, he's going to ratchet it up to a 10 and have to sustain it to knock the team out. Can you go four series operating at a 10 is the question for LeBron, especially if that last series is a, is a long series. Can LeBron be playoff LeBron again and have it last their whole playoff without, you know, burning out or fatigue like we saw in 2015? Number two, the emergence of a third scorer. Now, I don't know who this guy will be for the Cavaliers. I'm leaning towards Rodney Hood. I'm hoping it's Rodney Hood. I think Rodney Hood has the goods. Nobody's going to ever be able to convince me otherwise except for his play. I think Rodney Hood has it in him to be an all-star in this league. He's really big and he can shoot. He can put the ball on the floor. He can attack. He can pass. He can do everything. His consistency is going to be the key. And honestly... A lot of people won't admit it, but I thought he played very well in that first round series that he played in Utah versus the Golden State Warriors. I thought he played very well. If he's not the guy, who is? Is it going to be Larry Nance? It's not going to be George Hill. We've seen a lot of George Hill over the years. It is not going to be George Hill. The Cavs don't have a young guy who could potentially step up. John Holland or, you know, any of those guys. I don't, I don't believe any of those guys have it in them to step up. Who is the third guy going to be? It's not going to be Tristan Thompson. It's not going to be J.R. Smith. I'm either looking at Rodney Hood or Larry Nance. Jordan Clarkson could technically be, but I think he's just scoring off the bench. I don't think he's going to be somebody who they can depend on for 18 points a game for the duration of the playoffs. I don't think that. So the emergence of a third score is a big deal, and that's number two. Number one is they have to find a way to improve the defense. Last year, we saw them dependent on the three-pointer. Their defense was horrendous all year long. All they tried to do was outscore their opponent all year long. Even though last year, though, I do have to admit their defense did uh, ratchet up in the actual playoffs. This year, they have to do that again. Their defense has been terrible. They have no interior shot blocker, even though Larry Nance has come and helped a little bit in that role. But they really don't have an interior shot blocker. And then their perimeter defense is also bad. It's a whole lot of lost assignments. It's a whole lot of looking around. It's a whole lot of people getting lost on screens. It's a whole lot of horrible defensive principles that we see from the Cavaliers. Even though Teron Lou the head coach was supposed to be a defensive genius. People forget that these days. But when he was being chosen for the position, he was being billed as a defensive guru, a defensive genius. They have to find a way to ratchet that defense up in the playoffs when it matters. Not even just when it matters, just generally. They need to ratchet that, te- that defense up the whole playoff series. So those are my five keys. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you guys think. Can the Cavs win the title this year? And if so, what do they have to do to prepare themselves to raise themselves to a championship level? Leave it all below. All right, see you next time.